Hey guys, Yu Sheng here. Welcome back to the channel. I posted a community post the other day and you guys gave me um, a bunch of suggestions for what videos you want to see. And I'll try to get to most of them. Some of them I'm confused about though, like this one. A Protoss counterattack versus battle cruisers. I'm gonna need some more clarification on that, but I'll try to get to all of these if possible. But today we're gonna be looking at um, Gian Nguyen, hopefully I'm saying that right. He wanted a cannon rush defense guide and um, maybe some other cheeses as well. Hopefully he's uh, Zerg, if he's Protoss or Terran, then <laughs> he's not gonna be happy. But I played a Zerg game this morning. We'll go over here. And I played a cannon rusher, so perfect setup. I was actually gonna do more of like a two base muta guide. I think we'll, I'll do another video on that coming up. But um, yeah, we started doing that and then there were cannons in my natural. So plans changed. All right. I think, yeah, th this might not be the perfect setup, but um, in my experience, what I'm gonna show you guys works like 90, 95% of the time. It's like really, really high win rate. So if you guys are not, you know, well, I would say even like mid GM, <laughs> if you're not mid GM or higher, which is basically all of you guys, then this is going to be perfect. It's super easy. Um, you don't have to do anything crazy. You don't even have to uh, deal with the cannon rush. Basically, you just let it happen. So couldn't be easier. Um, okay. So first of all, I just want to point out a couple of things. Um, probably basic for most of you guys, but they are important. So first thing, first overlord really has to be going to the natural. You'll notice it's not here in time to see a cannon rush. So you're basically not going to get any info from this one. And so because of that, you're going to use your second overlord and you're going to put it, um, usually it's got to be in this area. Basically, sometimes it's got to be, you know, more towards the ramp. Sometimes it's got to be more over here. It depends on where the probe is. So you kind of want to just keep it like maybe around the ring of your hatchery and just follow wherever the probe is. And you might be thinking, okay, that sounds good, but uh, Hugh Shang, your second overlord is um, in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and to that I say I was gonna proxy my spire. So usually I put it over here, but for this game, I was gonna proxy a spire. And I think it's a law in StarCraft where if you wanna do something where it's slightly risky, then the opponent always cheeses you right then. So that's what happened here. <laughs> but uh, thankfully we don't really care too much because um, we're just going to make a Roach Warren. So he goes for a full wall here and he's gonna be placing his cannon um, on the low ground. Now I did get a little bit lucky, I will say, because this cannon on the low ground, if you place it here, I believe, can actually hit this gas. Um, so this map is a little bit broken, but luckily that's not well known. So um, we're, we're slipping uh, by here. And what we do is we basically just literally ignore him. I can see this um, at this point, I think. Oh, I, I saw the forge. So I already know he's doing this. And what we're going to do is we're going to get both gases. So as soon as you know he's cannon rushing, take both gases. And then once your pool finishes, you might be thinking, okay, I'm going to make a lot of zerglings and I'm going to cancel these cannons. But that is a very big mistake because you're not going to kill all the cannons. He's just going to wall or, um, and then you're not really going to get them all. Like he can put a pile on here. This one will never die. And then you're going to lose uh, tons of money, tons of larva. And yeah, you're probably screwed. So don't, don't panic like that. Don't even pull your drones for this type of defense. Just let him do whatever he wants. And then we are going to continue droning. Actually, we're going to get a roach warren and we're going to, um, basically just rush as fast as we can to ravagers and then we can either decide to clean this up really quickly or if you get lucky which i'll explain in a second this guy lets us get really lucky we're going to counter attack and just try and kill him before he even gets to uh stargate which is the most common uh follow-up because he gets air units and you can't make any anti-air units okay so we are lucky and the reason we're lucky is because he's cannon rushing us um, away from our larva. 
So you can see here, like this larva can actually um, escape, right? And so because the um, overlords can escape without dying, we have um, a ton of freedom to make units with his larva. So what I'm going to do is actually save some larva here. You can see I'm trying to build it up to three. I did make some overlords, but I'm going to make these three roaches here because then I can just ignore the cannons and we can make a beeline right to his natural and just kill his pylon, his stargate, and then we win. So that's the plan. I'm also making a queen. I think this is pretty important to the strategy. Um, it's actually not really for injects. It's more for creep. So generally what happens is, um, or uh, not generally, but sometimes what happens is they, you know, make like a robo down here or some gates and they make stalkers and stuff. And it helps a ton if you have creep really quickly or even later in the game when they go, um, like a void ray follow up, you really want to have lots of creep. So I think this is quite important. And where did our roaches go? Oh, they're still making. So we have the three roaches complete in here. I've also made some roaches on the high ground just to deal with these cannons. But these are the um, the main roaches here. We're going to just make them into ravagers, rally them across. And you can see here, he's following up with a very quick stargate. He's actually went stargate before his nexus. So this is basically as fast as he can get it. And it's still not really fast enough for the ravagers. So... Yeah, pretty much all the time this will work. I think if Protoss plays like literally perfectly, then you might be in some trouble. But like I said, I've been doing this at like low GM and it's it's working 95% of the time. So not going to be a problem. All right, we go for the pylon. He actually got supply blocked a bit here. Now he's really supply blocked. And I don't know why, but I thought this was a full wall. So I actually could have won the game really easy here. Um... But maybe so I can showcase a little better the transition, I don't win immediately. I'm kind of sticking behind the wall here. We get some nice Ravager shots. And in this type of situation, you can basically just kill as many probes as possible. You don't even need to win the game right now. You just want to get a massive eco lead. So don't feel like you need to, you know, shut down the Stargate and that's the only way to win. You can really um, just kill as many probes and that's also very, very good. So again, he's pulling probes. We're just target firing here. He could just A move too. Shoot some Biles. Try to get max value. And if I click on the workers tab, you can already see we're in a pretty good position. So we're just going to continue doing that. And then behind this, you're going to double expand. So the way I like to think about this is we're stuck on one base for a lot longer than usual. And so we, we want to get back to the normal. We don't want to like, you know, just take one base and drone up slowly and be behind Protoss. We want to kind of do, you know, do this really fast Ravager attack and then transition into our normal setup as fast as we can. So that's what I'm going for here. I'm also getting the layer. Um, sometimes I don't do that. Sometimes I just play uh, gasless. I just take everybody off gas and move them to the natural. But I do think it's a bit easier if you just keep everybody on and then you go for a really fast tech. Because most of you guys aren't, you know, super fast 400 APM players. So if you're, you know, microing these Ravagers, you're not going to have time to pull off gas. So just keep it on. And then you can choose to go for either a, um, a fast Hydroden or you can choose to go for a fast Spire. So in this game, I go for a Hydroden. Now in this game, we're also like crazy far ahead. So this game is pretty much over. But let me show how I finish it off because you don't want to rush to finish games. I think that's a common mistake. So we got the Voidary Harass. Notice I'm making queens pretty quickly as well. And I think I go up to like four queen. Should be pretty good. You could make more if he's making tons of Void Rays, but since we're going fast Hydra, you can kind of use those as well. So that makes it a lot easier. Droning up, trying to saturate our mineral lines first, very important. Getting the Hydra upgrades. Notice I'm not really making any Hydras yet because there's no uh, real need. Instead, I'm just going to saturate all the bases and then we'll make units. So really, really slow consolidation. You definitely don't want to rush in StarCraft to end your games. Now, I might have. it might have been better if I went for Overlord speed earlier. 
um, with the layer. That way I could just save these, but I didn't do that. Next time I'll do that for sure. Oh, you can see me researching it now. So he does get a bunch of overlord kills, which is definitely annoying, but not too bad. And now we're nearing uh, 66 workers. Actually, it might be a little bit under since this base is um, not quite full saturation. But we're nearing full saturation on three base. And then we're going to start making our Hydras. And then we're going to go attack. And then he's basically uh, screwed here. Now, I do want to say if you are going to choose Hydra instead of Spire, just make sure that you don't play a macro game. If you try and play a macro game with Hydra against Sky Toss, then you're just asking for trouble. <laughs> so don't do that. I see a lot of people doing that, like way ahead, trying to play late game versus carrier with Hydra. That is uh, not a viable thing to do. And yeah, you can see he's just like, he's so far behind. Even though he's so annoying with the Void Rays, he's basically just screwed from the early game. We got way too much damage with the Ravagers. And now the Hydras are here and he's uh, he's going to tap out. So yeah, hopefully you guys like this little mini tutorial. If you guys have some other suggestions for guides you want to see, just let me know in uh, that community post or a comment on this video is fine as well. I'll see it. And yeah, that is it for today. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.